So the job is to take a client, a customer, and turn them into a client. Now, <clears throat> here we go. Let's watch this. Let's see if I can, how do I get back to that? What you're going to do is 99% of your jobs, you're going to have a client sitting beside you. Everybody follow me with that? When you sit at the closing table, your client is going to be sitting beside you. Across the table from you is the other agent. They have their client sitting beside them. Thumbs up so far? But your client is my customer. Got it? My client is your customer. You help your client. You do not help my client. You have to be honest and fair with the customer. You can't lie to the other side of the table and say, oh, the house is perfect. You have to be honest, but you don't help them. That's my job. So 90% of all the deals you ever close, you are going to sit with one client and one customer. You on that side of the table are going to be sitting with your client and your customer over here. All right. With your customer, you have to be honest. With your client, we are going to talk about your fiduciary responsibilities. It's one of my favorite words in this book, fiduciary. Always sounds fun to say. Now, when you create the agency and make that customer into a client, you can create agency in two ways. The first way is called express agency. What does the word express mean? Everybody knows. Both people know. Your seller knows that he's your agent. And I know he's my client. Typically, express agency is in writing in the form of signing the listing agreement or signing the buyer's agency agreement, depending on what side. That is considered express agency. That's good thing. Now, there is another agency that is called implied agency. Implied agency is where one party or the other thinks there's agency and there may not be. Aaron, are you alive? Okay. <clears throat> Remember, I... According to the state, typically I just have to make sure I got visual contact instead of your ceiling lamp. <laughs> um, so express it or express both parties know implied one party may or may not know. Now, most implied agency occurs by one of you people. You're brand new, you get excited. You get carried away, and let me show you how this happens, all right? So, phone call comes in, and you pick up the phone, you go, hey, Modulin Group, and they say, hey, I saw your sign, is that house for sale? And you guys say, yes, that house is for sale. All right, time out. Is that that is what we call customer level service. You didn't lie to them, but you didn't really help them because they could have called any one of you in this square right here to find that information out. So I didn't really give them any information that they couldn't have got somewhere else. Understand? Uh, they say, oh, well, how much is it listed for? And you go, oh, it's listed for 145000 That, too, is actually called customer-level service. 
I didn't give them any information that you guys couldn't have given them. You could have looked it up on the MLS and said, hey, it's 145. So we are still giving customer level service. And the guy goes, 145, that seems awful high. Do you think he'd take less? And you go, yeah, he told me he was motivated. Ding, 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 ding. You just now told him something that you guys may not know. Because he's my listing, he told me he was motivated. I now helped this guy on the phone. I gave him information that he could not gain anywhere else. So I literally have created implied agency because I'm now helping him. Thumbs up. All right. So he says, oh, okay. And he hangs up and he turns to his wife and goes, hey, I just got off the phone with my real estate agent. He said the guy was motivated. Uh-oh. He may think there's agency and there may not be. You just go, oh, crap. There's another guy I lost. That is implied agency. It is still agency. All right. So there is a question that will come up. Implied agency, bad. Express agency, good. But implied agency is still agency. You still owe them all of these obligations. And if he says, well, my agent didn't tell me that. And you go, well, I didn't think there was agency. Dude, you helped him. You created agency. So there could be a problem. So what you should have done, 145 seems awful high. Do you think he'd take less? You know what, sir? There's a Starbucks right around the corner. Why don't I meet you at Starbucks and I'll show you everything. So you go to Starbucks and before you start, you go, hey, what I need you to do is sign this buyer's agency agreement and let's make this express agency. And now I can open up the folder and help you and do everything because we both know I'm your agent. All right. So the whole job is to take this customer, convert them to a client through express agency. You can do it through implied, but it's not good. All right. So remember that implied bad, express good. They are both still agency. So when you're sitting at the closing table, you've got one client, one customer. You have got one client, one customer. All right, that's called single agency. You represent one side. Now, there's one last term over on page 129, 139 that we didn't talk about called non-agent. A non-agent. This is a REMAX person. Really? Nobody? Does the humor lose its appeal over a microphone? A non-agent, a non-agent, think of non-agency and you will hear the term transactional agent, intermediary. This is a case and I've only done this about three times in 19 years because typically most buyers and sellers, when they're selling their home for sale by owner, don't think of an agent as being the person to call. They usually call their attorney. So for sale by owner is the most common time you will see this happen. What you get is a seller that has sold their house for sale by owner and they found a buyer but they don't know how to fill out the paperwork. So they will come to you and go, hey, Raymond, I do not need you to broker. I've already found the buyer. And remember, that's what a broker does, brings buyers and sellers together. He's already found the buyer. I just don't know how to fill out this purchase agreement. Can you help me? Yes, but before I help you, I need you to sign this form called a non-agency agreement 
which will make sure that everybody in this deal knows that I'm not your agent. So think of it like this. I have got two customers. I am not helping either one of them. I merely say signature here, date here, pay me 50 bucks. All right. I am not helping them. If one of them says, hey, that seemed awful high, could I've gotten it cheaper? I can't help you. Because if I help you, I create agency. And I don't want agency to be created. Since I didn't broker this deal, I don't want to get caught up in the lawsuit if this deal goes south. I don't want one of them to go, well, my agent said, no, 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 no. I'm not your agent. You signed this form. All I did was point to signature, date, sign here, notarize, and I'm done. So you just call them a consultant? You can call them whatever you want. And they have a lot of different fees, professional fees, uh, transactional fees, intermediaries. The concept here is I have two customers. I have no loyalty to either side. The other way to think of it is kind of um, my allegiance lies to the paperwork, not either person. I All I do is make sure, oh, you got the signature, you got the date. I'm done. And you typically get paid a flat fee, 500, 1,000, something like that, all right? I've only done it two, maybe three times total. It's not very common because most for sale by owners tend to think of calling an attorney to get help. All right, Ross, you're freaking me out, man. You're on, you're on my, you're on my picture twice here. Did one of it freeze? Yeah, because one of them's frozen. Yeah. All right. All right, so we're cool, right? 90% of your job, one client, one customer, you're going to have about 1% or less. You have two customers. I have no loyalty to either side. And I don't want to have loyalty because if I do, I create agency and agency means I have certain obligations to them and I don't want those obligations. My wife's bringing coffee, but she's trying very hard to avoid the camera. Oh, she got out of here too quick. <clears throat> All right, cool. Now, here's another key part. 